Computers are an important part of our everyday lives. Systems have been designed to make our life much simpler and easy to manage. Most big businesses have large servers or data centers dedicated to running their systems and are packed with the latest technology. Through history though, bugs have been known to affect systems in ways we couldn't have predicted. From worms to software incompatibility, let's take a look at some of the worst computer bugs in history. Number 5 The Morris Worm or Internet Worm of November 2, 1988 was one of the oldest computer worms distributed via the Internet and the first to gain significant mainstream media attention. It also resulted in the first felony conviction in the US under the 1986 Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. It was written by a graduate student at Cornell University, Robert Tappan Morris, and launched on November 2, 1988 from the computer systems of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It was created by Morris simply to see if it could be done. The worm exploited several vulnerabilities to gain entry to targeted systems and functioned through the exploit of weak passwords. Morris's coding mistake in instructing the worm to replicate itself regardless of a computer's reported infection status transformed the worm from a potentially harmless intellectual and computing exercise into a viral denial-of-service attack. The resulting level of replication proved excessive, with the worm spreading rapidly, infecting some computers a number of times. Morris was tried and convicted of violating the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. After appeals, he was sentenced to three years probation 400 hours of community service and a fine of $10,050 plus the costs of his supervision. The US Government Accountability Office put the cost of the damage at $100,000 to $10 million US dollars. Number 4 A software glitch introduced in 2003 led to a terrible miscalculation of sentence reductions that prisoners in Washington state were receiving for good behavior. Over a 13-year period from 2002 to 2015, more than 3,200 offenders were released prematurely. The problem began when the state Supreme Court ordered the Department of Corrections to reduce state sentences based on good time earned by inmates in the county jail system. The calculations were not properly applied, however, and about 3% of all prison releases from 2002 and onwards were earlier than intended. The DOC estimates that offenders were released an average of 49 days before their correct release date. Former inmates who were released early were later required to return to prison and complete their sentences. However, good credit time was given to these former inmates for their time in the community, meaning that only a small number returned to prison. The DOC learned of the issue in 2012 and reportedly took steps to correct the problem, but the fix was delayed for reasons that are unclear. Former Department of Corrections Secretary Bernie Warner stated, Obviously, an early release of an inmate from prison to the community is a serious public safety issue, and I share the concerns and unrest of the community. True unrest indeed came when it was reported that one inmate who was mistakenly released early had committed vehicular homicide. Robert Terrence Jackson Jr. was released on August 10th, though he should have remained incarcerated until December 6th. The accident, which killed Jackson's 35-year-old girlfriend, Lindsay Hill, occurred on November 11th. Perhaps this serious glitch in Washington's state computer system will encourage other states to review and upgrade the efficiency of their computer systems used in various correctional facilities. Another mistake like the one made in Washington state could have irreversible repercussions and legal consequences not only on the correctional system but on the community as a whole. Number 3 on the 1st of August 2012, Knight Capital deployed a new software update to their production servers. Around 8.01 a.m., staff in the firm received 97 email notifications stating that PowerPeg, a defunct internal system that was last used in 2003, was configured incorrectly. This was the first warning sign. At 9 a.m., the New York Stock Exchange opened for trading, and Knight Capital's first retail investor of the day placed an instruction to buy or sell their investment holdings. Just 45 minutes later, Knight Capital's servers had executed 4 million trades, losing the company $460 million and placing it on the verge of bankruptcy. 
some shares on the New York Stock Exchange shot up by over 300% as high-frequency trading algorithms from other firms exploited the bug. The cause of the failure was due to multiple factors. However, one of the most important was that a flag which had been previously used to enable PowerPeg was repurposed for use in new functionality. This meant the program believed it was in a test environment and executed trades as quickly as possible without caring about losing the spread value. Secondly, the DevOps team failed to deploy the updated program to one of the eight production servers. This server now had an outdated version of the software and a flag stating that PowerPeg should be enabled. Finally, PowerPeg had been obsolete since 2003, yet still remained in the codebase some eight years later. In 2005, an alteration was made to the PowerPeg code which inadvertently disabled safety checks which would have prevented such a scenario. However, this update was deployed to a production system at the time despite no effort having been made to verify that the PowerPeg functionality still worked. Ultimately, Knight Capital was fined an additional $12 million by the Securities Exchange Commission due to various violations of financial risk management regulations. The total cost of this huge error, a staggering $472 million in less than an hour. Number 2 The Mars Climate Orbiter was a robotic space probe manufactured by Lockheed Martin and launched by NASA's JPL on December 11, 1998. The purpose of this probe was to study the Mars climate, atmosphere and surface changes and to act as a communications relay in the Mars Surveyor 98 program for Mars Polar Lander. Nine and a half months after launch, in September 1999, the Mars Climate Orbiter was programmed to fire its main engine to achieve an elliptical orbit around Mars. On September the 23rd, 1999, the space probe began this planned orbital maneuver. After about four minutes, the spacecraft passed behind Mars, 49 seconds earlier than expected. Due to this, the Mars Climate Orbiter went out of radio contact and communication with the probe was never re-established. The spacecraft was lost to the Mars atmosphere. On November the 10th, 1999, the Mars Climate Orbiter Mishap Investigation Board released a report describing the issues that led to the loss of the spacecraft. According to this report, the primary cause of this failure was that one piece of ground software supplied by Lockheed Martin produced results in a U.S. state's customary unit while a second system, supplied by NASA, expected those results to be in SI units. In simple terms, NASA calculated the final stage parameters in the metric system while Lockheed Martin engineers used the British system. As a result, the probe lowered to 57 kilometers over the surface instead of the planned 110 kilometers and collapsed in the atmosphere. This whole project had cost a total of 327.6 million US dollars. Number 1 In 2004, Electronic Data Systems, known as EDS, developed a complicated computer system for payment of child support benefits for the British Child Support Agency. Meanwhile, the Department for Work and Pensions, known as the DWP, was in the process of reorganizing the institution. Running these processes simultaneously induced serious errors. The system paid over the odds for 1.9 million people and was short in payments for 700,000 people. It was described in the local press as the biggest computer crash in government history. At the time the DWP was carrying out a routine software upgrade when the system crashed, leaving around 80% of the department's 100,000 desk machines disrupted or completely shut down. The crash was caused when an incompatible system was downloaded onto the entire network, forcing employees to send faxes because they couldn't access their email accounts and to fill out some payment checks by hand. The DWP, which is responsible for providing a variety of state benefits to about 24 million people, attempted to downplay the effect the computer problems had on its customers, saying that the department's mainframe computers were not affected. $7 billion didn't make its way to accounts in time. The DWP had to deal with 239,000 old and over 36,000 pending cases that were stuck in the system. It cost over 539 million Great British Pounds, or around 1 billion US dollars, to handle the situation. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out one of our other videos on some of the world's most incredible moments. As always, 
Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.